Hello everyone, this is Robert, and this is the vertical spinning weapon from the BattleBot Fusion. We fought them back in 2021, season six of BattleBots, and I kind of picked this up as a bit of a trophy memorabilia, and I've been meaning to mount it in my office, but it's just kind of been sitting here in my garage for the past few years. So in this video, I'm finally gonna make a mount for this, get this in my office, and spoiler, the mount is going to be 3D printed. So grab your keyboard and get ready to leave some really nasty comments. Let's get started. My office has a fair bit of either BattleBots memorabilia or just kind of combat robot memorabilia. So this is gonna kind of go along with all the other stuff. I also have one of Son of Waiachi's arms mounted on the wall and I did a video about that previously. I also did a video about this weapon, kind of the unboxing and specs and stats of it. And I also have a video of the fight recap from that season of BattleBots. Both of those are linked down below. So the idea behind this is I want this wall mounted and it's about 30 pounds. It's relatively heavy. I want it kind of cantilevered off of the wall, which is gonna pose some interesting design challenges and I want it to spin because, you know, it's a vertical spinning weapon. I want to be able to walk up to it and spin it and interact with it. So those are the design goals. Let me show you what I came up with. So here's the idea, at least. I've got this 3D printed part that I kind of mocked up, printed out. Um, it's printed in the vertical orientation like that. You can see I've got some bearings mounted into the side. So Weapon sits in it like that, spin, 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 and then this mounts against the wall. This is a fair amount of weight cantilevered off the end of the wall. So that's gonna be a bit of a problem. So if we look at the end of it, um, I've got these two holes, and the idea is that rods or posts would go inside this whole cavity, and that's actually what would hold everything in place. There'd be a block of aluminum or some kind of metal that would go against the wall. This would just kind of slide on as a sleeve and the weapon would sit on top of it. And it looks kind of something like this. I just got the two by four to space it. So it sits on there, wall would be here. You can spin this thing around, play with it, stuff like that. So that's the idea. But when I made this model, I realized the rods really can't go far enough. They can really only go to about here and that's gonna be a problem. So I mocked up a second version and this one gives me a couple advantages. It's, it's a lot taller. So that means that this back mounting plate can be actually be quite a bit larger. The mounting holes or the rods are in the middle and those actually go all the way to about there. So tons and tons of support. So the next thing to do is to actually test this out and see what it looks like in real life. So I'm gonna make this piece, the actual mount, slide this on, just kind of see how it works out. So I'm just using a corner in my shop to kind of test this out. This is the test plate. This would end up being aluminum right now. It's just PLA. I've got two screws mounted directly into this stud and these are half inch steel posts. This just kind of aligns, slides in place, nice and simple. Sometimes it makes a little pop sound. There we go. And for mounting it in place, there's a hole at the base of there that lines up with a hole there. So I just kind of slide it in place. And then this is just a um, quarter 20 screw and that holds everything in place because otherwise it would just kind of pop out and that'd be a problem. So now it's on there. Uh, let's add the weapon and see what happens. So this thing actually feels a lot more solid than it has any right to be, especially considering this is just PLA and the mount is PLA. So I mounted a dial test indicator to show you just how solid this is. It is actually connected as you can see. And if we mount the weapon, that is about, yeah, let's call it 20 ticks at half a thou. 
So yeah, we're only getting about 0.01 inch worth of deflection or a yeah, third of a millimeter. So that's about how much it's deflecting, just that little bit. Pretty impressive um, considering, I mean, it, it can sag a little bit more, but it feels rock solid. So I'm pretty happy with this. Time to move on to the final design. So here is the final sleeve fresh off of the 3D printer. I did remove some of the supports. It was printed like that. So there's a little bit of supports around the bearings and this front lip, but overall it turned out really, really nice. This is Pet CF from Bamboo. And I did a little bit of tuning to the settings. I slowed down the outer walls to 75 millimeters a second. That will just give you a more consistent finish on the outside. And this was all printed on the Bamboo X1 carbon. And it looks really, really nice. And just kind of has a nice solid feel to it. And I didn't change anything else. Um, this is 15% infill, standard number of um, outside layers because it's just not needed with those rods going through the hole inside as I demonstrated earlier. So next thing I need to tap these, add the bearings, clean up the support or the um, yeah, support on the backside. And then I have a little face plate that is gonna go up here to identify the fight and what this is. So yeah, next I'm gonna move on to making the actual mounting hardware. So now I need to make this mounting plate out of aluminum. I already have the steel rods. These are already cut to length. I know those work. So I need to machine this aluminum. Now I've been watching a lot of this old Tony lately and I think instead of machining this whole thing down, I have a much easier way to do it. Hey, that actually worked out pretty good. Looks like the dimensions are right. Yeah, perfect. So the only thing is it didn't do any of the holes. I think there's actually a different operation for that. So let me give this another go. I think that's a snap. Not bad. So it looks like everything is in place. I must have snapped good. Got the tapped quarter 20 down there, clearance for the uh, mounting holes there. And there's even a little bit of clearance on the back. This is where the wall anchors are going to go. I couldn't find a stud where I want to put this. There's going to be some anchors, so I'll help kind of clear that so it sits a little bit more flush. Only thing left to do with this piece is to press in the rods. So normally if you were doing a friction or interference fit like I'm doing for a half inch rod, you would just drill it and then ream it out with an undersized reamer so that you're slightly under that half inch and then press it in just like what I'm doing. I didn't have the appropriate reamer for this, so I kind of did it the redneck way. I actually used a 12 and a half millimeter drill bit and just drilled it really sloppily. If you don't drill something right, you're gonna get an oversized hole. So I just did a pilot hole and then just did a full send with the 12 and a half. I didn't step up to it. I didn't use you know three progressively larger drill sizes. I just put some oil on it and just plunged directly in and I got a nice oversized 12 and a half millimeter, which was just slightly under the half inch, which was perfect. So the mounting bracket is done. Everything looks really good. It feels rock solid. These don't spin. They're super tight in there. Let's do a test fit. Lines up. Oh yeah, that feels fantastic. It has a pretty decent weight to it. It's actually a little bit lighter than I thought it would be. So the only thing that is left to do is tap these holes, add the bearings, and then make the faceplate and mount it. So almost done. At this point in the video, you might be thinking that this is completely overkill, over-engineered, and why didn't I just do X, Y, and Z? Please leave those comments down below. Engagement is engagement. Part of the reason why I wanted to do a 3D printed mount like this is because it is over-engineered. It is complicated, and that's kind of how Fusion was. So to do that robot justice, 
it just makes sense to do something like this. I could have easily just done a little stand mount, you know, a little walnut display stand that sits on the desk, but that just really doesn't match Fusion's style. Fusion had a vertical spinner at 250 miles an hour, and then a horizontal spinner that both of those were completely deadly. The thing was tiny. It always went up in flames. It was just wonderful. And just to do something really simple didn't really make sense. And the big thing that I really miss about combat robots in general is just that you were always forced to push the envelope. You were always forced to try out the new materials, try out new techniques, and just always dial it up to 11 for every single design. And so for something like this, it just seems more fitting to kind of take it to that next level. And yeah, use PET CF material to 3D print a sleeve that goes over top of an internal metal structure. That just is more fitting to Fusion, the BattleBot. Using a fiber laser to engrave 3D printed parts is kind of my new favorite thing. I did a video on this a while back and I just haven't had a good opportunity to use it. But you can use a fiber laser, you can use a um, 2 watt diode infrared laser, any of those work. It's basically just breaking down the pigment inside of the plastic and you're left with this really nice clean look. I think this is a really good technique when you want to do something exactly like this. It doesn't leave a raised surface or a pitted surface in any way. It looks really clean, really professional, and this is just PLA. So even though the main body of this is PET-CF, this is just a PLA faceplate, and I can easily swap this out with the screws. I've seen a lot of really neat stuff being done with PET-G, so I might try that. I just need to experiment a lot more, but this turned out really nice in my opinion. When I was looking for the right locations for this weapon, nothing really seemed to line up with studs, so I'm just using drywall anchors, and they're always a bit of a pain, especially on an exterior wall that is so full of insulation, so it took a little bit of fiddling to get the anchors in there. But I did myself a favor on the mount. I made the holes quite a bit larger than they needed to be, so that gave me a little bit of adjustment so I could kind of tighten the top one, adjust the bottom, and get everything lined up so it was nice and square. So after sitting in the corner of my workshop for the last three years, it's finally time to put this weapon on the mount, and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out, both aesthetically and functionally. The thing is so solid. I can't convey to you how solid this thing feels. I guess I did with the dial test indicator earlier, but it really feels like it's part of the house. When you set it on there, it doesn't budge or flex at all, which I'm really happy about. Aesthetically, it came out great. I think the laser cut faceplate or laser engraved faceplate turned out really nice, but Reese, I'm really curious to see what you think. You built this bot, you drove it, you fought against me. What do you think? Does this do fusion justice? There is a bit of an emotional component to a design like this because what is memorabilia if not something that happened in the past? So I haven't really done combat robots in a long time. And after this season of BattleBots, it's kind of when I stopped building combat robots. So if anything, this is just kind of a reminder of something that I used to do. But it is nice having all these little trophies and memorabilia around my office because it reminds me of all the things I've accomplished. So anyway, as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. 